We're taking a look at the Hafler uh, DH120. Was sold as a kit or pre-assembled. Uh, and when I say a kit, the boards and the outputs were already uh, assembled, including the wiring behind there. Just we had to assemble the power supply and this bush of wires over there. Bias is 150 milliamps, recommended setting. There's the bias potentiometer there. You remove the B plus fuse, or you could do the B minus fuse, does not matter. Then you turn this pot to say 150. Weird enough, you turn the pot counterclockwise to increase bias and turn it clockwise to decrease it. Um, and actually, the bias pots are kind of bizarre as far as they can go, so you really can't increase the bias beyond 150. Uh, see the components on it. There's this resistor, R10, which is a 2 watt film resistor. I believe it's 5100 uh, ohms. You can see it's over there too. These get extremely hot. Um, and it actually burns up the board. You can see by those diodes, you can see how hot it got over there. That's not good for the diodes. The diodes are sensitive to heat. While the resistor might be fine, the surrounding components may not be you can kind of see uh, the burn marks on the board, uh, that solder blob there, and that one there. I guess it melted solder a little. Not good. Um, taking a look over here, you can see same thing. Really burnt by those poor diodes. In case you're wondering what that crap is on the pot, that orangey stuff, that is nail polish. They use that so the pot sort of stays still and it seals it up a little bit. It's always best to turn the pot when the unit is off to sort of break that crust off so you don't all of a sudden jump but on this one it doesn't really matter because you can't really go beyond the recommended bias anyway that is to adjust the balance the balance believe it or not is actually not DC offset so we don't really know what that one does at this point uh, DC offset in both of these channels uh, were under 20 millivolts I think this one was like 5 and that was like 15 uh, as you can see the back is also simple you have a Capacitor going from a lug to ground, and uh, as you can see, it's really easy down there. Nothing resistors and stuff. You have an input cap, which is 2.2 microfarad, and you have a polarized 100 microfarad, 25 volt, and then two 100 microfarad, 50 volts. Fuses are four amp fast flow fuses. Seems like an overkill, so I'd probably underfuse it uh, versus risking stuff if it were to go wrong. This is a 7.5 ohm 10 watt resistor used in the ambience circuit, uh, which is a nifty wiring that'll make you hallucinate or something. I don't know. You also, this one came dent, I don't know, or dented, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's a little dented a bit. Uh, so I'm gonna have to certainly straighten that out. It's actually a bit more worse off camera than it is on camera. Uh, no, nothing with damage. You can't uh, resistor that I'd probably upgrade in value or get new ones and keep their legs as far as possible. I don't know why if they want to keep the same value. Why don't they take one of those uh, sandblock resistors, put it on this side, and heat sink it, glue it with like thermal adhesive. The wire is this stranded. I don't know if it's stranded because it's pretty thick. It looks like heavy duty solid gauge wire. And it sure seems that way. It's kind of like a solder coating over stranded wire, but the whole thing's tinned. I don't know. I can't tell if this is 18 or 24 gauge. My guess is, or no, 22 gauge, or maybe it's 20 gauge. Either way, I would upgrade the wiring to probably 14 gauge. That would involve drilling bigger holes on the bottom of the circuit board, which I'll probably end up doing. I can't stand low gauge wire. As you can see, there's a DH200 with 220 circuit cards in it, uh, which are PC19C, and you can see I went pretty badass with the wiring. I went really heavy duty. That's important. Um, but as you can see, this nest of wires back there. Also, the binding posts are really cheap uh, and do not allow for a very heavy gauge of wire. You can see that's pretty thin uh, for wiring there. There's your input jacks, and you have these input pots to adjust the input level. Believe it or not, you can't actually turn them like this. You actually have to use a screwdriver and adjust the little slot. You can see, I don't know if you can see the slot there. Uh, 